They gave me my hand back. Before, I didn't have a right hand. Now I do. Deep brain stimulation. Since I've had this done, it was like the first day of my new life. What is it? It's designed to allow you to live a normal life. What diseases does it treat? Tonight, you'll get the answers on Stimulating Minds, presented by Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. Good evening, I'm Valerie Pritchett. Thank you for joining us. There are over 600 types of neurological diseases, including Alzheimer's, muscular dystrophy, and Parkinson's. More than 1.5 million people in the United States live with Parkinson's disease. A new case of Parkinson's is diagnosed in this country every nine minutes. The average age of a person diagnosed, 58. Joining us in the studio is neurosurgeon Dr. James McInerney. Doctor, tell us about the Penn State Neuroscience Institute. Well, the Penn State Neuroscience Institute is a center um, that is comprehensive in its nature, bringing together researchers, um, teachers, and clinicians like me uh, to take care of people with neurological diseases. And what do you mean when you say comprehensive as far as the location goes, and how does that benefit the patient? Well, I think that what we mean by comprehensive is that whether it's uh, research at a basic level or a translational clinical level, whether it's teaching, um, it all comes to bear at the end of the day on how well it, a patient does. And by bringing all those experts together into the same place, we're really able to do some very special things for people. What types of neurological diseases do you commonly treat? Well, within the Neuroscience Institute, we, we treat a full range of, of really all neurological diseases. Um, things like uh, progressive neurological disorders, motor problems, but then that also goes on to things like brain tumors or even back pain, so a, a huge range of things. And are there different types of neurosurgery? Well, sure. I mean, all of us as neurosurgeons tend to specialize in different things like brain tumors or back surgery, but my specialty of functional neurosurgery mm -hmm. is a field where we, we try and take uh, technology and apply it in such a way that we can very minimally, invasively, and uh, uh, effectively make people better than what they were before, increase their level of function, if you will. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Now, here's a story about a Lancaster County man who was forced to give up his greatest love because of a neurological disorder. Steady hands, precise moves, turn a piece of wood into a work of art. Woodworking is 73-year-old Chris McKee's love. It's always been a passion with me. I've always, oh gosh, since I was eight years old, I think my dad bought me a jigsaw. And I made, don't have any, these half moons and stars. That was the beginning. Chris perfected his skill over the years. Now, most of the furniture in the McKee home has his name on it. My wife saw a picture, no, we saw a real fancy jewelry box, nine drawers, all that one time. She said, can you make it? Yeah. So I came home and made her one, you know, just without drawings or anything, just, just the creativity and joy. A true craftsman until his right hand started to shake about 15, 20 years ago. Something like that at first. Just, just a little bit of a shake so when you try to eat, why? You spill your food and can't get keep it on your spoon and fork and when you try to drink while you drink, it's difficult. He dropped things. He would drop, if he put dishes away, sometimes he'd drop them and we, have, we had an awful lot of chip plates. Chris and Joanne's three sons and their families noticed it too. You could see the frustration in my father, especially sitting down at the table and trying to eat. You know, sometimes it would get so bad that he would just get up and leave. Uh, because just, you know, trying to put food in his mouth, a basic activity. Doctors diagnosed Chris with essential tremor. We all have tremor, actually. We all have a physiological tremor. But for some people, it's bad enough that they can't control their movements and it makes it very difficult for them sometimes to do very simple, straightforward things like feed themselves, dress, things like that. Chris says the shaking got so bad he sold his valuable woodworking tools. With no right arm, I couldn't do my crafts, I couldn't write. I was fairly depressed. In fact, one friend of mine kept passing tools over to me. I said, I can't use them. Dr. Jim McInerney at Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center is one of a few neurosurgeons in the state that performs a procedure called deep brain stimulation. He knew it would control Chris's tremors. 
Deep brain stimulation is when we take small electrodes attached to wires and implant them deep within the brain into specific targets that when stimulated allows us to control and modify the symptoms of diseases such as Parkinson's disease and essential tremor. I think they were confident they could do something. I mean that's, that's the word he came back with. That they could fix it. And fix it they did. Chris had the surgery two years ago. No pain, no side effects, no nothing. And of course they bring you to awake again in the OR and the fellow from the Tronics is there and he adjusts it and he says, okay, hold a cup of water. You know, and I was able to. A small device that works wonders for patients like Chris. Say bye bye, pop pop. Say bye pop. Yeah, bye pop. Um, just like night and day, you know, he, he has his hands back, <laughs> you know, and because he's so active and it just robbed him as part of his life, so now he has that back. And it's great. It's really mind shattering. It's, it's really amazing. They, they gave me my hand back before I didn't have a right hand. Now I do. And you can see Chris is a very happy man. Now at this point, there's no known cause for this disorder. It usually hits people when they're in their 50s or 60s. Dr. McInerney says for many essential tremor patients, deep brain stimulation is the solution. Back to you, Val. Thank you, Deborah. Deep brain stimulation allowed him to live his life again. So what is deep brain stimulation? Well, it really is cutting edge technology. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little stimulating electrode here, and they're really very small, about the size of a piece of spaghetti, really. And we very precisely put that into the brain. And using a little generator that we put in the chest, we can program this and, and control mm -hmm. symptoms that are abnormal, like his tremors, and get him back to normal activity. Again. And it's like night and day. Like, it's that fast when you turn it on and turn it off. It's you like see the turning difference. a switch. Amazing. Now, how long have you been performing this procedure? Uh, well, this was approved in this country in 1998, which mm -hmm. is when I started doing it. Um, our practice has been growing in the time that I've been at, at the Neuroscience Institute. Um, we at this point do about one of these each week. And that makes us about as busy as anybody in the country. And speaking about how it's performed, what's actually done? Well, um, as I said before, it's, it's actually a minimally invasive type procedure. Uh -huh. um, small incisions, a couple little drill holes that we have to make, but right. it doesn't require a lot of anesthesia and we actually do it with people awake for most of the procedure. And surprisingly enough, we were, th we were talking, the brain does not feel. So what somebody Correct. may fear when they hear that, they're not actually going to feel what you're doing in their head. Right. And they it's tolerate amazing. it very well. Absolutely amazing. All right. Thank you, doctor. Many grandfathers dream of teaching their grandsons how to play ball, but Parkinson's nearly ended this ma a man's quest to share the great American pastime with his loved one. That story's coming up.